Galaxy pilot Bud Trainer pivots from the Vietnam War to another global flashpoint. We were told that there was a little unpleasantness going on over in the Middle East, and that's about as much as we really knew. That little unpleasantness is a full-blown conflict. Egypt and Syria have crossed ceasefire lines into Israel-occupied territory. Suddenly, the Israelis find themselves outnumbered 10 to 1, fighting on multiple fronts. Israel appeals to its ally, the US, for help defending against the Soviet-backed Arab coalition forces. Israel needs ammunition, spare parts, and other combat supplies. They've been in a desperate fight for nine days, and they've got to be resupplied. This is going to be the biggest airlift of combat supplies that the world has ever seen. The biggest airlift needs the biggest plane, the Galaxy C-5, a tough task for a new and not yet battle-hardened aircraft. With revolutionary design and vast size comes great complexity. The C-5 is a tricky aircraft. It turns out to be a little bit difficult to maintain. For every one hour a galaxy spends in the air, mechanics spend multiple hours on the ground, testing and replacing parts. It's time well spent. On a plane this big, minor issues can scale up. The failure of any one component could mean disaster. And for this Israel relief airlift, the galaxies must be fighting fit for a 13,000-mile round trip. The European allies in NATO are very skeptical of getting too close to this massive Arab-Israeli war. So what that means is all the supplies going into Israel have to come directly from the United States. The only place to allow a pit stop are tiny islands in the middle of the Atlantic. In the briefing, they said, you're going to fly to the Azores, the Portuguese island. Then you're going to fly from there into Israel and come back. But as the galaxy descends through thick clouds towards the Portuguese airbase, a tiny but vital sensor on the outside of the aircraft, the pitot tube, fails. Trainers' instruments go haywire. They aren't representing the airspeed and altitude and our cabin pressurization is having problems. We didn't have any indications of what we were doing. Trainer can't trust the instruments he desperately needs to land through the clouds. The weather's got a 300-foot ceiling, clouds, rain, wind. For us to be able to fly an approach, we have to have airspeed and altitude indications. There's no other airport in reach, so Trainer calls for help and asks another transport aircraft, a smaller C-141, to be his eyes in the skies. Just like a fighter pilot would do, we pulled up into position beside the 141. The 141 made the instrument approach and penetration, and when he broke out below the clouds, he just kept going, and we just landed based on seat of our pants. 